Good morning. And from our island of Guam, buenas and half a day. It's great to be home. <laughs> Again, I first want to acknowledge uh, our public officials, Mayor Stone and our city manager, Cook, as well as all public officials. And I'd also like to, again, thanks, give acknowledgement to the Board of Trustees, President Gregg, and the faculty and staff for inviting me to speak today. It's indeed an honor to return as alumni of Notre Dame. And thanks as well for all that you've done for the students of this university. An acknowledgement and also to the friends and family of the graduates here who've been supporting them in this journey. But most of all, congratulations to all of you, the Argonauts, the graduating class of 2017. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, time sure does fly. It seems like a blink of an eye when I was in your shoes. That was now, 34 years later, I've got a wife, a beautiful wife, six children, three grandchildren, another one on the way, and I'm here to celebrate the graduation of my, my baby boy, PJ, with all of you. <laughs> From the same school I did. You know, as a freshman in 1979, it's a long time ago. I was 50 pounds lighter and I had black hair. But the nation was much more different and the world was much more different. We had no iPhones back then. And for a college student, an electric typewriter was a necessity. I don't know if you ever heard of Walkmans and Sony Trinitron color TVs, but if you had them, you were state of the art. <laughs> back then, the top 10 companies, Fortune 500, they were just the oil companies and the car companies. Now it's a diversity. It's diversity of mass retailing, technology, communications, health services, pharmaceuticals to go with cars and energy. And as a student, we had many discussions and one of them was communism. And at the time, how it was on the rise. There were socialist Marxist revolutions in Central America with Nicaragua and El Salvador and there was so much bloodshed there was an energy crisis, and the dollar was in trouble. And at the time, some of our college students and some of our professors were even asking if Western-style democracy or capitalism was headed for extinction. In 1979, no one ever predicted that the Berlin Wall and the Soviet Union collapse would collapse about a decade later. To my students, my alumni, there are certain things that they say are certain, that is death and taxes. But my fellow Argonauts, another thing that is certain, and that is change. Change is inevitable. Well, some things don't change. In 1979, I, I'm a 49er fan. Steve DeBerg was quarterback, and we were in last place, unfortunately. And judging by last year, certain things don't change. But I'm an optimist. We're going to get a quarterback and get a good defense back. But by and large, things do change, and they change unexpectedly. Today, as one who's raised a family, spent 17 years in the private sector, 17 years in public office, and I, I'm a person who never thought I'd be governor. And here I am in the last two years of my final term in public office as a governor. I go back to time sure does fly, and change comes unexpectedly. Take it from me. Now, as I reach the sunset of my political career, I'd like to give you a little advice. Number one. Education, use what you've learned in this institution, build on your education, and use it as a foundation to propel yourselves to the future. Next, relationships. 
Humans are social beings. We are not meant to live alone in a cave. The relationships that you build, however long they last, you invest in them, you learn from them, and you cherish them. That's a part of liberal arts. <laughs> Human interaction helps us all to become better. We learn more about ourselves and the world around us through our relationships. Also, hey, this is a Catholic college. Whether you have religious, spiritual, metaphysical, or even moral foundational values, I urge you to anchor yourselves in these values and belief systems. Because the world is getting more and more complicated. You have more information in your iPhone than I could have access in a computer back in those days at IBM. That's the beauty and sometimes the penalty of the digital world. Everyone has the potential here to be overloaded by sensory overload. And it is these core values, these beliefs that can keep you focused, rooted, and anchored to what you know in your heart and soul is a true you and what is good for you in your life. Finally, as I said earlier in my remarks, time flies and change is certain. I don't know if you watched a movie called Good Will Hunting, but there's a well-known Latin verse from the Roman poet Horace that goes, carpe, di carpe diem qua minimum credula postero. And roughly translated, that means seize the day, could put very little trust in tomorrow. There are opportunities that you see today that might, may not be there tomorrow. My advice, if an opportunity arises, jump for it. Don't worry, wait for the perfect time or the perfect day, because that day may never come. And don't be caught in the trap of regretting something that you never did and asking yourself years later, what if? So today, as you sit here ready to embrace that next great step in your life, I encourage you, my fellow Argonauts, to embrace the fact that you will always have just one today. And today is your day. Now go ahead and seize it and carpe diem to the class of 2017. God bless you and congratulations.